Today's project is restringing the piano, but since I don't want to string anybody along, here's why I'm choosing to do this. This is a section of the one of the original strings from the piano, and the wire at this point after 100 some years has become brittle. Here's a section of new piano wire. Not so brittle. It's tough stuff. Let's take a look at this demo piano to see how pianos are strung. You know, as I was cleaning this up, I realized that pianos are a lot like cats. Not only should they not be outdoors, but if you own more than one, you're likely carrying a lot of emotional baggage. I'll have to keep that in mind. <laughs> you can see pianos are strung in an interesting way. So there's actually three wires or strands per note called a three string unison. So here's one note, one, two, three. All that for one note, in this case, the highest note on the piano. So this lowest tuning pin, the furthest one over, starts, it loops around this hitch pin and terminates in this middle pin. And then the next one starts here. It's the last string in this one note, but goes over and then the next leg of it starts the first wire of that next note. The bass strings on the piano are a little different. They're actually strung over the tenor and treble wires on the other diagonal of the piano, and they're one wire, so they're looped at the end to catch their hitch pin. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Well, back to the project. Any questions? Don't be afraid to ask. If I don't know the answer, I'll make something up. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> With the cast iron plate removed from the piano, I was able to have full access to clean the soundboard and the inside of the cabinet. camera I did choose to paint the cast iron plate because I thought the original paint was just a little too far gone. It would look out of place once the new strings and tuning pins were in place. I don't know how much this cast iron plate actually weighs, but I think it weighs more than I do, and it's top heavy. I used a couple of miniature screw jacks to help me lift the plate into its final position before I put in the hardware. following along since episode one, you may remember that the bass bridge did this when I took off the bass strings. Well. Yeah, that's not supposed to happen. This wasn't a real big surprise to me, as the piano didn't have a real strong tone in the bass section before I took it apart. With the bass bridge being loose from the soundboard like that, there was a significant loss in transfer of energy from the strings to the soundboard itself. Luckily for me, and historic pianos in general, my friend and colleague John Treffs is able to take an old bass bridge and duplicate it, making a brand new one that should last another hundred years. Well, why not glue on the old bass bridge? It came off the piano, shouldn't it go back on? Well, since it fell off, now is a great time to replace the bass bridge. The bass strings have what's called a side bearing going between the bridge pins. This offset and the tension on, of the strings themselves creates a lot of force and as the string wants to straighten out it's pushing on those pins it wants to separate and split the wood. Over time the bass strings win. So again now is a perfect time to replace that bass bridge. These bridges are one of the most complex wooden parts in the piano and well beyond my skill set to make. Thank you John. Time to put in those new strings. My friend and colleague Steve Meisner joined me to help restring this piano. I'm so thankful Steve is willing to do this with me because it takes what is really a long and arduous task and makes it a little more enjoyable. On average, it takes us between six and seven hours to restring a piano. 
I mean, look at this, look. Here's how long it takes to do one string. Oh, I want to speed this footage up so bad, but we're in this together, right? Okay, it may look like there's too many cooks in the kitchen right now, sure, but you'll see. As the job goes on and as the strings get longer, having Steve's extra hands and having Steve's help really makes a huge difference. Ah, finally, on to the bass strings. It always feels so good to get to this part of the job. 
it just goes faster. Not only because there are fewer notes here in the bass section, but also because the strings are pre-made. Much like the bass bridge, I had to send the bass strings off to be duplicated. They were made by Mapes Piano String Company. They've been in business for over a hundred years. The bass strings in each piano are just a little bit different in both the length and also in the gauge or the size of the wire. As the notes get lower, the strings get heavier or thicker so that they have more mass and therefore a lower tone. making great progress when Steve said, hey, don't you maybe want to, I don't know, paint that font like it was originally? We're about to pave over it with the bass drums. Yeah. I had completely forgotten about this detail. When I say forgotten, I mean procrastinated to the point of oblivion. I really don't care for painting. Just when I was excited about wrapping up their stringing job, here I am painting. And then we get to go back to stringing around wet paint. While I did that, Steve calmly worked on the understringing cloth. Thanks, Steve. to do now but paint I suppose. Here goes nothing. Okay enough of that. Here's the final result. Well more or less. I've still got a few finishing touches to take care of. Yes, more painting. But it's so nice to have the restringing done. The piano is finally starting to have a voice again. Yes, it may look like a lot of this work was cosmetic. Certainly the painting was. But the majority of this work needed to be done to get rid of the corroded and brittle parts. Hopefully this is good for another hundred years. Next week, we'll take a look at this thing. Thanks so much for watching. I'd like to share my passion for player pianos with, well, anyone who's interested. That includes you and maybe a few people who haven't been enlightened yet. If you would, please consider sharing this video with a friend. And if you have any questions or concerns about what the heck I'm doing, please feel free to leave a comment below, if you want. No pressure.